As the days grow darker and the nights colder, the secrets of the season are set to be unraveled. Join us detectives as we follow the footprints in the snow and decipher the enigma of this winter. Here are this year's suspects. It's time to dust off El Nino. After three La Nina winters in a row, El Nino is back with warmer water in the equatorial Pacific. This clue might crack the case of weather patterns worldwide. The polar jet stream often stays north in Canada, thwarting cold and snow from making mischief in Connecticut. El Nino winters here are usually warmer than average with below average snowfall. But could this be a red herring? This El Nino may not play out like strong ones in years past. Ocean temperatures are warm in a lot of the Pacific, not just near the equator. With less contrast in water temperatures, El Nino's role in the winter plot could be limited. Now let's take a closer look at the polar vortex. No, not that close. The polar vortex is a swirling mass of frigid air in the icy vaults at the top of the globe. When the vortex is strong, it remains locked over the poles. But when it weakens, cold air goes rogue, escaping its icy lair. I've got a bad feeling about this. We're seeing conflicting evidence here. Siberian snow cover was low in October, which usually indicates a stronger polar vortex. But at the equator, the QBO, or winds in the stratosphere, are easterly. This can indicate a weaker polar vortex and more cold weather outbreaks. The truth may be somewhere in the middle with periods of cold and snow followed by longer stretches of warmer weather. Next in our climatic detective saga, the North Atlantic Oscillation. When the NAO is negative, the jet stream gets blocked up, signaling the arrival of cold and snow. In most winters though, it flips back and forth like an unreliable witness. But it's been mostly negative since July, thanks to warm waters in the North Atlantic. We're seeing signs that this continues with storms lurking in the shadows. Just one more thing. Let's pull the files on previous winters. The last snowy winter was 2017-2018. Since then, five in a row have had less snow than average. In our warming climate, frigid winters can still happen, but they're happening less. Trying to foresee winter's whims often feels like firing shots in the dark. But based on our investigation of the clue so far, here's our working theory. We are expecting a slower start to winter with above average temperatures in December and January. That doesn't mean it will be warm all the time. There will be frigid interludes. But we think February is the month to watch with a higher risk of cold spilling south. With El Nino, one can deduce that nor'easters are favored with a juiced up subtropical jet, but it all comes down to storm tracks. Some may miss us to the south, hitting the mid-Atlantic, but if everything lines up with a negative NAO, we could be in the sweet spot for a couple of bigger storms. So connecting the dots, what does it all mean for snow? It's elementary, my dear Watson. It's Ryan. We're expecting snow totals to be pretty close to average, which compared to last year might seem like a lot. In the Hartford area, 50 inches of snow. On the shoreline in New Haven, 35 inches of snow, 75 inches in Norfolk, and 60 inches in Staffordville. And with that, the case is closed. Stay warm and vigilant, for the cold winds of winter hold secrets yet to be uncovered. I'm Rachel Frank. And I'm Ryan Breton, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.